plants actually the conditions are optimal because we get the best quality oil the most potent oil um, full of all the different natural constituents that we want to find and that means that it does all the different jobs that that oil should do and then the last one was lemon so yeah most of you well you all guessed it was a citrus lemon doTERRA source their lemon from from bulgaria uh, bulgaria what am i talking about <laughs> they source their lavender from bulgaria they source their lemon from sicily so sicilian lemons um, i've actually been there and um, yeah, it's you know, a country full of sunshine and produces just really, really, uh, the most common comment that people give me when they smell lemon is that it smells just like lemons. And then they laugh because then I put them, <laughs> of course it smells like fresh lemons because it is, it is from fresh lemons. So yeah, that was just a little bit of fun to get started. Um, so welcome in. Good to have you here and this uh yeah this funny funny old time but hopefully we've got a bit of normality coming back quite soon um what we'll do is i'll just i'll just sort of introduce myself so um, you've been invited here either by sajida or by lena and um i work with both of them and i've been you know sharing and teaching and using these oils for about five years and essential oils all my life I'm also a nutritionist. I um, live in Brighton on the south coast and I'm excited to yeah, share with you a little bit about the oils this evening, how, how you can kind of use them either as a tool to support your health and wellness. Um, you can use it instead of, a, instead of a medicine cabinet or alongside a, a, you know, um, a, a regular one, depending on you know, what, your, what, what your thing is really. So they can totally be used alongside conventional med medica medication um, or, you know, just in their, in their own right. So it'd just be quite useful to know, is there anything um, specific that, you know, like I, any of you would like to learn? So like what specific, why, why are you here kind of thing? Is there, is it like a particular health goal or you're just interested in learning generally a bit about the oils? So I'm just going to go in order of people I can see on the screen. So, um, uh, Tabitha, do you mind starting? Just generally interested and in, yeah, not something nice to do. <laughs> yeah, to do when you can't do too much else, can't get out at the moment. So yeah, no. <laughs> lovely. Thanks. All right, Lisa. Yeah, I'm the same as Tabitha. Really, just okay. something nice to do. Yeah, perfect. And do you guys do to use essential oils already, or is it sort of brand no. new? Okay. Same with you, Tabitha? Yeah, I use essential oils a lot. Okay, what kind of things do you sort of use them for or do with them? Generally just in my bath, in the children's baths. Right. I use eucalyptus in my bath and lavender in theirs. Um, and then sometimes just in, in the shower, you know, just a few drops in the shower. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? The, st the steam kind of brings it all up and the vapours yeah. circulate. I've, really nice. I've got a nice um, women's balancing blend from Neil's yard as well which I think is quite a common one yeah yeah use and sometimes I just like rub that in my hands and sniff it <laughs> perfect all right we'll be doing some of that we'll be doing some sniffing <laughs> um all right cool Jenny um I'd, I'd definitely be interested in learning more about the food grade this is something I was talking to Sajida about on um last last week in a park <laughs> we had a good yeah. chat okay. and um you know I've been using essential oils quite a lot for sort of medicinal and just well-being really but the food grade is completely new to me so that would be really interesting cool nice yeah it was it was new to me actually and being a nutritionist I'm like I'm a bit obsessed with you know food and cooking and finding you know interesting new healthy options all the time so yeah when I when I heard that they were food grade it, it firstly it kind of can be a, a little bit like oh you know sometimes people are like well you you can't do that <laughs> basically you know but again but yeah. it's because that whole historical thing has been around the point of reference has been around synthetic oils you know whether we kind of knew we were using them or not the majority are um uh, there's a guy actually on amazon that has tested them um, the three most commonly bought lavender oils on Amazon and only one of them actually had any lavender oil in it like so the three you know the ones that are bought most often um 
two of them were synthetic completely and one of them I think had 40% lavender in it. So um, yeah, I think the main thing is, you know, when you've got a pure oil, then if you choose to, some of them you can, you know, you can use in your food and your drink. Um, and that's what we'll be doing in a minute. Once I've, um, once I've asked Daniel, we're going to be trying some uh, lemon oil in our water. So have you get your lemon oils ready, which was uh, number one. Anya. Um, I was mentioning to Lena that I had, oh, I got my headaches back and she sent me the peppermint oil. Okay. Yep. And it really helped. Okay. Great. Hemp. Okay. What did you do with it? The peppermint oil? Uh, sniffed it and put it on my temples. Nice. Okay. And behind my neck. Great. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he peppermint's my go-to. Um, I find peppermint works for me if, if I catch it early. You know, like sometimes you can just kind of procrastinate and not do anything about But if I if I feel it and I apply it, as, as, <laughs> then it tends to get rid of it. If, if I don't do that, then I need, so, so sometimes I need to try something else. Um, and, and that's one of the things to say, actually, is that because um, we are all different, we're all biochemically different from each other, sometimes we have to play around with what oils work best for different things. So the, actually with the head tension, there's a lot of different things, um, lots of different oils. So lavender is another good one. Uh, frankincense, some people like to do a, a, a head tension blend, which is those three together. Uh, frankincense, a drop on your thumb and you rub the inside the top of the roof of your mouth is another popular sort of way. Um, but that's great that you kind of, yeah, it's, it helped you. And obviously yeah. that's, that's the thing, you know, if sometimes you <coughs> only take one experience to be like, well, if it, if the peppermint oil helped my headache, then what, what can all the other oils do, you know? And that's why they actually, when we're talking about pure oils, they can actually be used as this kind of medicine cabinet tool if, if, if you want to use them in that way. Whereas before for me, I only used them in my bath. Um, I had one of those candle burners, you know, so I would use it to fragrance my room. Might use a bit of lavender if my child cut themselves, but I, I didn't really ever think I could use them for much more than that. Whereas now they are all I use to take care of my family's health and well-being. you know, 10, 10 core oils, which are kind of what I'm gonna be talking about this evening. So we're gonna take our lemon. We're gonna take our glass of cold water and depending on your the size of your glass I, I i happen to have a big glass today um if you've got a big glass um you might do like when it's full you might want to do four taps in the glass you know a small glass it doesn't matter too much of lemon like two to four taps um so you could start with i'm just going to find a little bottle that's the same size as you guys have got um, I Sarah, find... can I just say something? You said number one, but that's lavender. Oh, I apologise. Yeah. Has anybody already put it in? Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I was looking at the L. I apologise. Yeah, three. Bottle three. How much in that size? So I would say start with a couple of taps. So can you see I'm holding the bottle here. It's quite good if you can just try and tap it with your index finger. Um, because if you kind of do this, it kind of, you're never really sure, it ends up getting everywhere and not really, it's bit, you can kind of direct it much more easily if you tap it. Um, yeah. give it a stir. Yeah, you can have a smell. You'll know if it came out as well by smelling. Give it a stir and have a try. Um, and if you want it, you want another couple of taps, you can, you know, it's like you can, you can add, but you can't take away. Um, so it won't be too strong, two taps and a glass of water, you, you, depending on if you like strong or not strong. If you didn't stir it, you got that whole bit of lemon in one go and that is, you know, a bit strong. So that's, what, that's why I asked you to bring the teaspoon because um, otherwise it sits on the top. Um, but if you stir it in, it should be very pleasant. So what do you guys think of that? It's got a... Uh... Not a very nice aftertaste. Okay. Either that or it's my water. I don't know. Okay. How's everyone else finding it? It's lovely. Really. Yeah, really nice. 
Okay. Fresh, nice. Just and it's subtle as well. It's not like having mm. a kind of um, obviously lemony drink. It's quite yeah. subtle. Maybe try again, Anya, with another another. I'm going to get a drink. bottle of water. Okay, cool. Um, so as I say, so two taps is um, it's not quite a, a drop. So if I was if I was doing like a big glass, I would do a drop out of my regular size bottle. Um, just to give you an idea, like three taps from your little bottle is one drop from here. So, you know, the two taps you've just done is not quite a drop from a regular size bottle. Um, so, we, I'm gonna, I have actually got some slides to share. I'm just kind of doing this as a little bit of a, you know, just a kind of a, I guess a get, getting to know each other a little bit and making it a bit interactive. So lemon oil is something we can drink. It's quite a nice way to start the day. It was um, my water. That was it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. So that tastes better, does that? Mm. Cool. Yeah. So it's quite a nice thing, way to start the day. You know, like that traditional lemon. You know, you squeeze. You hear a people squeezing a half a lemon in water. Don't have to worry about your teeth with lemon oil because it's alkaline. So lemon juice. You do have to be careful with your teeth. Um, and, and essential oils are stronger than the plant that they came from. So when we're using an essential oil, so lemon or peppermint oil tea, as we'll try and affect, um, we, we're getting more benefits, like increased benefits, because that lemon or that peppermint is giving us way more benefits than if we were to have a peppermint tea bag, for example. So if you do the same now with your um, peppermint into the hot water, um, start with two taps. Peppermint oil is much stronger than the citrus oil. So, um, you know, definitely no more than two taps to start with. Stir it well. If your mug is boiling hot, you're going to get a lot kind of strong vapors. So you might want to close your eyes or, you know, just have a little, you know, because um, again, it's amazing. But if you do this straight from the kettle and you're not prepared and you get like really strong peppermint in <laughs> your eyes and your nose. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Sarah, can I take a step back? With the lemon, Yeah. Um, how does that affect you if you are supposed to be avoiding any citrus? So if you've got, you know, is it the same? I mean, my nutritionist, said for me to avoid there's certain fruits i, I shouldn't be eating and yeah. ci uh, citrus is one of them i mean not like, um well she just said when she done various tests on me she just said the body doesn't really like it i mean i've i've had them for years no yeah. but she just said certain things like strawberries and various bits but lemon was one of them and limes as well yeah. amongst yeah. other fruits actually it's a tricky one like if you if you knew if you knew you reacted you know you could yeah. try, you know you could try and you know smell it and see how you were and then dilute it and put it on your skin and, and you know you can kind of play around with it that way yeah um, if it's an allergy or a food sensitivity um you know normally when we're sensitive to something it's the protein in the food um and oils don't have any proteins in them. Okay. So potentially it's a different beast, it's a different thing. Yeah. But you could okay. always, you know, double check with her and ask. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So <clears throat> peppermint oil is um, when you have this cup. So if you wanted to do another tap, if you think, oh yeah, that's fine. I'd actually quite like one more tap, and you've put your three taps in that's actually equivalent to one drop from a bottle like this. Um, one drop is actually equivalent to a whole box of tea bags, peppermint tea bags. So what, you know, us having a, a cup of peppermint tea, we're getting a lot more digestive. So one of the properties of peppermint, you, everyone knows this, it's, it's good for the digestive system. Um, you're getting, a lot of a good amount of digestive support you know um when i trained as a nutritionist we didn't i'm not a herbalist but we covered herbs a little bit and we were told you know that if we wanted to get somebody to drink herbal tea to get the benefit um they need to have about seven cups a day and no one's going to drink seven cups of herbal tea consistently um but with a peppermint tea, a peppermint oil tea, you can easily get a really good, good amount. You know, you're getting the equivalent of 
or like 28 cups actually in in, in you know the, the full three taps which you don't you know depending on how strong you like it you could have put that amount in a whole teapot and share it and you know it just depends on preference all right so i'm going to share my slides now <coughs> We can make this interactive, so like do interrupt as we go through. I've, been, I've um, introduced myself. <clears throat> so what I'm passionate about is empowering people to feel like they can make decisions and support their own health as, a, as in the first instance. So. I, I, I love myself to feel empowered with my family, to be able to have the tools in my home to support their health. Myself in the first instance, if that feels safe and appropriate and, um, and, that, and that's what I do and that's what I'm, I'm passionate about sharing. So, you know, I'm here to kind of to, to suggest that you guys can have, you know, a set of oils in your home and use them to support emotional health physical health um and even get just getting toxins out of your lives in general so some people are drawn more to the um perhaps they want to get toxins out of their home in terms of what they're cleaning their home with and um, they might want to start maybe making really simple things like multi-surface sprays with water vinegar and lemon oil um, or they might want to be thinking about well, what am I currently putting on my body, like personal care products and what switches could I make there. So this is a little um, health chart, wellness chart, and things under the dotted line are four broad areas that kind of really make up, if we can have an eye on all of these areas, we can be in the best health possible. And what I just invite you to do now is just have a think about perhaps which one area you could make, you know, you perhaps would benefit from um, focusing on, you know, where do you need to do the most work the most? You know, it's different for all of us. Um, for me, I think it's probably sleep. So it's the blue, it's the blue bands for me, the rest and managing stress. Sometimes I feel it's exercise and eating right. I kind of go a bit up and down with those two. Um, and as we go through this evening, you know, if you want to put, um, you know, which one it is for you in the comments, feel, feel free. Um, reducing toxic load, if you're wondering, is what I was just saying about how can you reduce the toxins coming into your home and into your life. So through how, what you're cleaning your, you know, your home with, what you're putting on your body, what, what's the quality of perhaps, you know, water and um, toxic you know like what what job do you do do you live near a main road all that kind of stuff all right so one thing i just like to kind of get across before we talk about the oils and, and how to use them is that although we have this thing called a healthcare system actually we're sicker than we've ever been we're putting more money into this healthcare system than we've ever done um, and we're all sicker and although medicine has its place and it's wonderful to have an NHS, medica medicine actually doesn't make you better. It never actually, it doesn't address the root cause of why somebody is sick. And so it's much better to, if possible to try something natural first. It doesn't add to toxic loads then and actually over time, because something like an essential oil works to support organs and body systems, um happy hormones all those good things we can actually address root causes over time um if we're kind of especially if we're using them in a preventative way and we're using them to stay well um they can be very powerful so there's three things that i would like love you to remember when you finished tonight and then there's also three um three safety notes that that will follow in a minute so i've covered a lot of this already they're natural so you know doTERRA oils come directly from the plants and they're very strong so i've talked about that already they they are very affordable as well you know um the oils are available individually they're also available as kits and they're kind of cheaper when you get them as a collection 
And, you know, they are an investment up front, but when you actually, you know, work out the cost of our peppermint tea was 7p or 5p if you just use the two taps, um, and you compare that to, you know, a box of peppermint tea, um, they're actually much cheaper. Or if you compare your drop of peppermint to a dose of a Rennie or, or a, a Gaviscon or something like that, again, it's like, if you kind of consider the cost of being off sick, um, cost of description, you know, and you kind of compare it. And then the other thing is that, you know, they're effective, like I've just talked about, they have the ability to address the root cause and they actually strengthen the body, you know, they're not, they're not contributing to um, making it weaker. So one very exciting thing, given that we're in a pandemic, this is particularly relevant. So if, you, if we drill down to um, the, our, us at the most minute level, we're maybe <coughs> and if this is a cell of our body, essential oils have the ability to get through the cell wall. And um, what, what's interesting is our cells are made of oil. The edge, the outer edge is the barrier made of oil and it doesn't really let very much in very easily it's there to protect us but viruses are little buggers and viruses when they get into our bodies they actually do they penetrate the cell wall and they live and hide out inside our cells now bacteria live on the outside um, and the reason why doctors tend to send us home if we go with the virus or flu as an example of a virus is because the reason they can't give us anything is because most medication is water-based and water and oil, as we know, can't mix and water can't penetrate this oily layer. And so medication can't penetrate and get to the virus, but essential oils are oil-based and many can get through the cell membrane, which is very exciting. So we have our, our oils that we'll talk about in a bit. And some of these, um, you know, we can use to support our bodies um, against kind of environmental threats. And then lastly, you know, the doTERRA brand is super safe. DoTerra, DoTerra's prime interest is quality and purity, and they go to more lengths than anybody else that I've come across to, to ensure that the oils are pure. When they came into the marketplace 12 years ago, there was, well, there still is nobody, nobody, um, uh, there's no quality standard, so any company can put anything in a bottle, they can call it 100% pure, and there's nobody checking that. So that's why, like I said earlier, 80% of, of world oils are synthetic, and even the other ones, they're not all pure. Um, three out of 50 that were tested by a company called the Aromatic uh, Plant um, association <coughs> in testing and only three out of 50 were 100 percent pure so um doTERRA have created this kind of quality stamp called the certified pure now called tested grade um and with a single oil you can actually go onto a website called source to you.com um you can see there's a little um uh, serial number you can put your serial number into the website and see the quality reports so you won't have that on your little vials because we've kind of made these up for you um, but any single oil not on the blends but the single oils you can go and and track um, and doTERRA are the only company in the world that make these their quality reports their testing reports available to the public which I think kind of speaks volumes this slide Shall I just pause actually if there's any questions so far? New, no? all good. This slide will interest you if you care hold about. On. Hold on, sorry, sorry, I couldn't get it off mute quick enough. I'm so <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't you're on mute. Couldn't see everyone. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I forgot what I had to ask now. <laughs> sorry. Um, so with the oils, are you suggesting it's it can be taken in any format for it for it to be uh, for it to work basically you know could you put it in some type of a steamer do you have to drink it you know do you have to rub it is there any better way of using it yeah so you can so you can't drink all oils um but many of them you most of them you can smell or put on your body um, and as we go through some of the oils in a minute, I've got a little code that sort of says whether you, which ones you can use in which ways. Okay. 
um yeah. and i'll talk about also kind of you know which way is most effective for what things so, just one yeah. just one thing sarah um once you've opened your peppermint and if you do get some on your hands just be aware that um it is strong not to touch um any delicate areas so around your eye and you know maybe wash your hands before you go to the loo um, because otherwise it could get really cool yeah <laughs> it does that was for, that was a tip for lisa that's yeah coming up <laughs> yeah I, I will uh yeah you you dilute to carry oil if that happens get rid of, get get it gets rid of the sensation so this one is just about um doTERRA's business model in terms of how they grow the oils and who they work with and who um, fills the oils, they consciously choose a business model that lifts the lives of many, many individuals rather than perhaps the cheapest and easiest way, which would be to own farms. They, they consciously want to empower lots of individuals. So that's kind of what this slide is about. Um, you could learn and Google if this is important to you. Um, more and more people, you know, want to know where their money's going and the story behind, you know, uh, the things that they're buying these days. So yeah, so this this answers your question. Um, but broadly speaking, these three different ways. So we're going to try this with our peppermint oil now, and um, we're going to put um, a couple of taps on our hand. It's a really strong oil, so I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and when you rub your hands together, leave your fingers out. Just um, two or three taps in the palm of your hands. Rub your hand and close your eyes and have your hand a little way away from your nose because we want this to be really lovely. Um, and if you do it right up close, it can be a little bit strong. So eyes closed, a little way away and have about five deep breaths. And I'm going to ask you uh, in a minute what you experience. You can, when you're done, you can rub any residual on the back of your neck, in your chest, wherever you like, really, wherever feels good. Because peppermint's also it's good for relaxing um, tissue discomfort, particularly if it's nice to do this in the shoulders. So I'd love to hear, what did you feel when you did that, anyone? Go straight through your sinuses. Yeah. And if you do it with your nose and your mouth open, doing the deep breath in, it's a lot stronger. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, it's a decongestant, powerful decongestant for sure. Thank you. Anything else? Quite a sort of mental... Sorry. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Quite a sort of um, calming. Um, I, I agree with the sinus thing, but it was quite um, oh, like a little yeah. high almost. Yeah, in yeah, a okay. calming way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. So it is it is a bit contradictory because it is it is good for that yeah tension release but it's also the number one oil for energy. So it does give you that a little, woo, a little bit of, um, and it's good. Some people use it if they're trying to get a coffee. Some people use it if they're trying to like, you know, they had that mid afternoon slump and they want to like avoid a chocolate bar. Um, other people, if you're someone that's into exercise, people will use it before they go out and do their run or whatever they're doing. Um, other people first thing in the morning, so yeah, absolutely. It's it's the number one oil for energy. Is anyone anything else? I mean, that we've covered most things, I think. But there might be. It's then um, the emotional aspects of it's the oil of a buoyant heart. So it's one that also can give us a little, you know, help us kind of if we're having a bit of a low moment or low time, it can just kind of pep us up. Kind of think of peppermint as something that peps you up. It literally, you know, just give you a little boost, not just your energy, but just your mood. It just 
can make life feel a little bit less, you know, serious in the moment. And so what we've just done is we've just tried an oil, what we call aromatically, which means you smell it. And the, the reasons you might smell an oil, A, you get it in the system really fast, but B, it's a great way to impact mood and emotions. And I'm gonna show you why on a slide in a minute. And then topical, um, topical, we'll, we'll get onto this a bit later, but you can apply an oil topically because you want to target a particular area. So for those of you that decided to, um, to rub the peppermint oil on your neck or, or on your shoulders, you might feel it's tingling a little bit because you can see under the peppermint it's a cooling oil. Um, but also by rubbing the residual on, on our shoulders, if we've got tight shoulders, the reason you apply an oil topically is to, to, because we're trying to affect a particular area and doTERRA have a, a blend called the Soothing Blend, which we'll come on to in a bit. And this is really good for kind of uh, tissue discomfort. And then lastly, with some of doTERRA oils, not all of them, and only if you've got oils by other companies, um, I'm not talking about those, okay? I'm just talking about ones where the company say that they're pure enough to take internally, but we can have a drop in water. So we're not going to take the in, the on guard in, internally on this call. Um, we're going to smell it in a bit, but it is one that you can. It's quite spicy to take internally because it's got clove oil in it, which is um, one of the strongest kind of hottest oils. And ways you might take an oil internally. We've obviously done that already with the, the lemon and the peppermint tonight. So firstly for pleasure, for food flavoring, but also if we're trying to get the oils into our system, then it's a great way. We can, we can take them in water, but we can also um, take them in some capsules, which I'll show you in a minute, um, and that will make more sense. So the reason that smelling an oil is so powerful for supporting the mind and the mood is because at the back of our nose, we have something called an olfactory receptor. And I won't go into any more science than that tonight, don't worry, but it's called the olfactory receptor and it connects to our brain. And the limbic part of the brain is where those beautiful plant constituents end up. They're interacting in a positive way with our brain chemistry to support happy hormones, happy feelings. So um, when we eat um, bananas, it helps us make more serotonin. When we smell orange oil, it helps us make more serotonin. It's the same, same thing. We're just supporting the serotonin that's already there in our, in our bodies and, and in that area. And the limbic system of the brain, really excitingly, this is where we um, process past trauma, memory, um, uh, motivation. So it's a really, like smelling oils, I've, I've just been talking about it actually on um, a, a doTERRA um, UK event just before I came on here. We had uh, over 500 people on, on Zoom and I was, I was explaining how, you know, smelling an oil within literally milliseconds, we can influence how we're feeling. So, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about sharing these tools because, you know, I, I, within reason, you know, I would much rather somebody start with orange oil or lemon oil if they're feeling a bit unhappy than going straight to the doctor and getting antidepressants, you know, because they really can influence how we're feeling. And there's, there's, there's tens of thousands of scientific studies that have been done on essential oils as well. So this isn't just theory or um, alternative medicine that's a bit hippie and a bit out there. There's actually lots of science behind this as well. Oh, by the way, those pictures are of uh, cold mist diffusers. So it's much better to, to diffuse the oil. It, with You fill them up with a bit of water. The water never gets hot. Um, different amounts of essential oil, depending on the size of the diffuser in your room. And what they do is they distribute the, the oil really beautifully, really delicately, and um, it's not heating the oil up. <laughs> we kind of maintain therapeutic properties by not overheating. 
Okay, so um, this sort of talks a bit to um, what Sajida was mentioning. We want to try and keep essential oil out of all orifices. And some oils that we class as hot, which are a bit burny. So if we got peppermint oil somewhere undesirable, it would start to burn and sting. Um, oregano is another example. If that happens, try and remember not to wash it out with water because water and oil don't mix and the essential oil say you had oil in your eye it's actually going to go deeper in if we put water because the oil is going to try and get away from the water what we want to do is apply a bit of oil even if it's just olive oil from our kitchen or that coconut oil that will do it um, and, then, and the, the sensation immediately goes it works like miraculously but you need to use oil not water so yeah in terms of safety you know as long as you're kind of following the guidelines which you know the person that's invited you here tonight it's their job to you know help you and connect you and show you um the resources and um, if you decided to get started with some oils as long as we're following those we don't have to worry about safety um the only thing that sometimes occurs is skin sensitivity but we just know that if we felt a bit of skin sensitivity, we just dilute the oil with carrier oil and it goes away immediately. So you're never gonna get hurt. It just sometimes might feel a little bit burny. Um, one, one safety note though is that citrus oils, only if you're applying them on the skin and you go in direct sun, bright sun for prolonged periods or sunbeds, it will cause burning. So you just be aware that's the main um, bergamot is the worst, but all, all citrus oils or blends that contain them. All right, so if you have a think now, um, you could put, put these in the, in the comments if you would like to. Um, a couple of things that you'd like to feel more of and a couple of things that you would like to feel less of. Put those in the comments and we'll see as we talk about the oils, which ones might might be able to help those things the best. I know for me right now, I would like to feel less stress. I would like to feel <laughs> more, yeah, not so much energy. I think I would like to sleep better. I would like to feel, get more out of my head and be able to switch off more easily. Yeah, I, I was actually just talking on, uh, <laughs> uh, doTERRA has done a, a study in the UK, a survey of 2000 adults to find out it was on mood. Um, and the three things that have come out most prevalent was stress, anxiety, and um, uh, actually, ha you know, happy feelings. They were looking at all types of feelings, but you know, stress and anxiety, even outside of the pandemic, always are always like, you know, something that they're quite prevalent, I find. <clears throat> so overwhelm, overwhelm, yeah, there's a few different ways of looking at that with oils. So we can look at, um, there's a digestive blend actually, which isn't the first thing you might think about, um, but it can help you process um, and assimilate your experiences. Um, but also kind of, I find getting out of my head. So sometimes I need to go and just do something else, um, get my energy moving. So it might be moving my body. It might just be having a break and doing something different. Um, but with oils, things like orange, frankincense, um, balance, which is a grounding blend are all good for kind of helping you get out of your head and, and, uh, citrus oils are great for any kind of tension or, um, if you want to feel more calm and rested citrus oils, lavender, uh, peppermint, as we've talked about, frankincense, things like that. Um, and we've talked about peppermint being the number one for energy. Um, some people might choose lemon. Um, they might choose something like um, rosemary. So the 10 oils anyway that we're going to be talking about, I'm just going to get this panel out of the way, um, are doTERRA have this kind of collection that they've put together because they, they address 300 different things so these particular oils do lots and lots of different things so not all oils do but um they've kind of put this little kind of starter collection together 
as I say, you can get oils separately, but I'm just going to be covering these ones because they're a nice kind of place to start when you're considering different oils. So we've talked about the lemon already. So, you know, you guys are going to have some oil left over after tonight. And these are some other things you could try. So you're welcome to take any kind of screenshots or there might just be one, one thing you, you want to note down. <clears throat> So the main things that I use lemon oil for, I drink it in my water. I use it in my cleaning. So I'll put a drop on a sponge and wipe down my kitchen surfaces and then I'm getting the, the aroma. And I love to smell it, so I, I'll diffuse it. Um, <clears throat> my son's teacher actually uses it in the classroom. He's the equivalent of uh, year six. And um, it's a male teacher actually. And, um, in the emotions book, lemon is the oil of focus and it's actually great. It's great for us too, but it talks about helping children who find learning hard or feel like they can't do it, can't learn. So we talked earlier when we talked about internal use about putting an oil in, I talked about a capsule. This is what these capsules look like. You can get them and make your own up. So um, you might put a couple of drops of a particular oil in um, to support something. Oregano would be a good example, and I'll come on to that in a minute. Should we have a smell of our lavender now? We're going to use the lavender. We're going to use the lavender topically and aromatically. So, what we can do is lavender is mild enough to use neat. Um, if you know you have, I mean, lavender should be fine for everybody. But if you know you've got really, really sensitive skin. You know, have it, you know you can go to some carrier oil if you need it. So do like three taps. I'm going to do like one tap because I've got a, a regular uh, one drop because I've got a regular size bottle, and rub it um, rub it wherever you want. Maybe into your kind of heart area, so your chest area, or maybe just um, on the back of your neck or your shoulders. Just wherever feels nice. It actually doesn't matter where you put it. Um, and then rub your hands together for a little smell. You'll probably still be able to smell the peppermint maybe, but actually that doesn't matter. You're not going. Why? Go away, Poppy. So what we know about lavender, what science tells us about lavender is it actually um, reduces the stress hormone cortisol. So the one that makes us feel stressed, when we use lavender, it literally reduces it. So that's to me a no brainer, you know. Um, there's also science to support us using it internally in this way. So you could have a lavender tea or you could smell it, whatever, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, but yeah, it literally, you know, it reduces <laughs> the hormones in our body. Um, it doesn't necessarily, it's not going to make you fall asleep during the day, but it's up to you. You know, you, over time, if you have a collection, you kind of work out which ones you like to use when. But um, you could use lavender during the day. You might team it with something else. You might team it with a citrus or some peppermint. But um, nothing to stop even though it's associated with sleep and it is a great sleep support you could it could be a daytime oil for you um there's this emotional aspect there's this book that we love called emotions and essential oils and lavender is the, the oil of communication and calm so it's a completely different angle it's not like oh you can use lavender for anxiety or you can use lavender for skin like skin support's a massive one for the lavender but the, the the emotions angle is difficult conversations um if you struggle to speak your truth speak up um you can use lavender and it, it can help you um have those conversations and move into a place of feeling more kind of confident and having more emotional honesty so peppermint we've already covered quite a lot so i'm not going to spend too much time here other than to say I love it in anything chocolate related so I've taught a lot of healthy chocolate making classes in my time and I have it in with my breakfast every morning I make chocolate granola and put two drops in the milk I make oatly coffee, a 
like a nice organic um, oatly coffee and I blend up a drop of peppermint into that in the blender and it's all frothy and it's, it, it, it's really delicious. So this one we haven't got. Um, this is more commonly known, Melaleuca, more commonly known as tea tree. And I, I think of it as a bit of a first aid oil, a bit of a cleaning oil. It's just a general anti everything kind of oil. So um, but it's pretty gentle. So it's, it's, it can, it can kind of affect, it can, it's an anti everything and works really well, but then on our skin, it's actually really gentle. So you can make this up into a nice little spray and to have in the home. And um, yeah, skin and scalp and nail health, they're all the kind of things. If you've got kids, if you've got grandkids, if knits are a thing, I put it in my, my shampoo as a bit of a deterrent as well. So, you know, if they, if they did happen to have a knit, then they're getting an equal of tea tree when we wash their hair. Oregano is one of the hottest oils, so you never use this undiluted. Um, and left. I put it on my feet undiluted because my feet are tough, you know, but everywhere else you would dilute it. And this is kind of like your antibiotic. This is the one that doesn't come out very often, but it's great to have it in your arsenal when you need it. You know, it saved me going to the doctors many times with my kids when I was thinking okay, <coughs> there's nothing else but to take them. Got this out, used it, you know, every four hours and by the end of the day they were better. Sorry, Sarah, say, say that again. So how would you use that on kids? So you would dilute it and you would rub it into, we haven't talked about this actually, but I would rub it into the soles of their feet. So feet because it's a very effective place to then get it throughout the whole system. Reason being, we've got loads and loads of capillaries just under the skin. So we put the oil on here the capillaries basically take them into the system and circulate it and deliver it to the cell. Okay. But you know, like I was saying, viruses live in cells and bacteria live on the outside. So anything that we get into our bloodstream then eventually gets delivered to our cells. That's like the flow of things. When we, same with food, we eat, it goes into our intestines, out into our, from there through into our, our bloodstream. And then the bloodstream delivers those nutrients to the cells. So you don't use this when they were poorly? Only, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah. And then the other side of oregano is it's delicious in the kitchen. So a drop in hummus or like um, a tomato dish, like a pasta dish, something like that. Really delicious salad dressing. It's really strong though. So if you're using it, I would... Um, measure it out onto a teaspoon just so you just have the one drop otherwise it's too much of oregano and you kind of ruin the dish and then we're going to try our on guard now so on guard is a hot oil so it um just need to move this just to see okay so can you see there's an s there for sensitive so what that means is um, if you if you've just got regular skin, you'll be fine. You can, you can apply it onto your body, but if you know you've got sensitive skin, don't be don't be rubbing it onto your skin without diluting it first. The palms of the hands don't count though, because again they're quite tough. Um, what we might do though is we might put a bit on the um, either on the out back of our hand or on our wrists, just somewhere where we haven't put oil already. So tap two or three drops, either onto the back of your hand or to your wrist. And again, rub them together. So either rub the backs of your hands together or rub your wrists together and have a, have a little sniff. sniff. Tell, me if, um, tell me if there's a season that this particularly reminds you of. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a very kind of festive kind of smell, hasn't it? And you can see on the screen there why um, it's the cinnamon and the clove and the orange. So this one, uh, Anya, this one you'd kind of use as a daily kind of defense, if you like, a daily kind of keeping, keeping well. And then the oregano, you would save that if you kind of really needed it. You know, and how would you take that every day? What's the best way? This one was, because this smells so good you would either diffuse it or rub it into your feet 
or your kids eat. So you get these things here. Have you guys sort of seen these roller balls they're called? My roller roller's not on here because my son's been messing around with it. But um so what you would do is you would make yourself up a roller ball. Um if it's especially if it's for kids. Not you didn't don't need to do that if you haven't got kids and it's just for you. And you'd put depending on the age of your child five to ten drops and you'd top it up with um some kind of carrier oil. So doTERRA's um sells one called fractionated coconut oil um so you have some kind of nut seed or vegetable oil in here and how much of uh, the other stuff so five to ten drops of oil and then just top it up and top up yeah and you can apply it they can apply it anywhere really but up and down the spine or soles of the feet or pulse points are kind of the most obvious place and you know just doing that once a day is amazing um or diffusing this you know three times a week you can do it every day but you don't actually need to because it, um my my children's science teacher actually tested this out in their classroom against dettol um antibacterial uh sort of re regular hand sanitizer and soap and this this outperformed all of those um Another science teacher that I've just heard of, this, this, this particular one, is um, he used to diffuse it in his lab and it hung around for such a long time that all his, all his experiments and his Petri dishes stopped growing. So I know from that you don't need to diffuse this every day, but you know, three times a week probably is, you know, and you just know you've got that, that, that protection, that, that air, air cleansing. So, Air, air is kind of a bit of a friend if you like to on guard. So it's known as the respiratory blend. This one smells like peppermint and eucalyptus to get together. It's really fresh and opening and lovely. So this one is like your natural fix. So you dilute it and put it on the chest or dilute it and put it on the feet. And it just helps to clear congestion. Um, yeah, or you can put it in the diffuser as well. It's really nice like that. The other oils that are in this blend are lemon and cardamom, something called Ravensara. <laughs> and we're almost there. I've got uh, three oils left. So deep blue is the one I mentioned when we were talking about tissue discomfort. So, and, and while well, I was talking about it, when I have um, sort of head tension, and I, if I don't get my peppermint oil out quick enough and I need something a bit more, then I use this It's a blend and it's pretty, it basically it smells just like deep heat or tiger balm. It's that kind of camphor wintergreen smell. And it's really, really effective. You can use it for active lifestyles as well as different discomforts in the body. And it comes in a cream as well. That's what the, the tube is there that you see in the picture. So there's kind of some products, they come in a few different forms. And then this one, Anya, is this the one you've got? You said yeah, you, yeah, because I think Anya already had some peppermint at home, so she got sent this one instead. So this one is a digestive blend. It used to be called Digest then, and that image there shows you kind of quite nicely what, what's in it. And I like to have a drop of this in water or in one of those veggie capsules that I showed you earlier. I'll put a drop or two in there and just follow it. What's a it. veggie capsule? Do you remember there was that picture earlier of those, that little clear capsule with some oil in it? Shall I, go <laughs> I must have missed that bit. Okay, I'll go back um, there on the bottom left. Can you see it so there? I had, a, I had an issue with those, those capsules. I don't even know those capsules, but I've tried to put oils in capsules before and it just like melts the capsule. Yeah, um, I that's happened to me as well. It happened to me right at the beginning. I. Uh, I made some capsules up for a friend um, and I realized that you basically, you have to, they don't, you, they disintegrate basically. You have to take them and use them. You can't take them and store them. So you have to make them up as you want to use them. You can't kind of say, oh, I'm going to make up, you know, a week's supply of this. You, you, have, you have to make a fresh one up each time you want one. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, doTERRA do do some capsules already made and they've 
they've chosen something that you know is better um they're called soft gels so you get on guard for example in a soft gel and you get this digestive blend you do get it in a ready-made capsule and that they are they do tolerate the oil yeah they're amazing and um and the um the the, the little species. yeah the little beadlets as well that the, yeah that the have a quarter of a drop of essential oil in each one you get that as pep in peppermint and on guard so this one is phenomenal because it works so fast it's really anything digestive related the first oil that got me excited about doTERRA because i took it and within five minutes i felt um you know that my digestive discomfort had eased so it says take internally at meal times how so a drop in water um water. yeah or a drop in um you know i don't suggest dairy milk if you've got di digestive issues i mean i don't i i don't think it's great anyway because it's quite mucus forming and yeah the whole kind of um animal so soy milk yeah just anything plant-based would be great um children though we don't give children young children oils internally so for them we just dilute it and put it around the tummy or on the feet as it says there and when you say young children what do you is there a kind of age where you can start yeah. giving them internally yeah i mean i mean i have given my children oils under six but under six is kind of like not really and then over yeah. six over six kind of now and again and then puberty onwards you just do the same as an adult yeah okay but it's also based on you know what you feel you know we've all got intuition and we've got, you know yeah so just kind of work with that as well okay this is the last one, very special, um, quite costly when you're buying it on its own. Um, lots of history um, around it. Um, it works on a cellular level. There's lots of, um, it, it works, it, 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 there's lots of science to suggest that this can do lots of really important stuff. Um, I'm not allowed to tell you what, what, but you can go and do your own research, or maybe you already know, you know, but um, go, go have a look. This is a really, really special, powerful oil. Um, in this way, people like to take a drop under their tongue or perhaps in a veggie cap every day. Otherwise, you can kind of rub it on your feet because when you're doing, rubbing an oil on your feet, you're getting it in every cell of the body often. This oil, yes, um, not all oils, but this oil has the potential to do that. Brain health, um, calming. This one's really calming sleep because it's on the nervous system getting out of your head. So that overwhelm thing, um, the digestive blend we just talked about was the other one for overwhelm. Um, it's been, it's incredible. Face, women use this oil and report back all the time that it's amazing and you know they're noticing a difference with their skin. So it does loads and loads. It's a real kind of jack of all trades. These are just to show you that even with, you know, these, these 10 oils, you can make up, have some fun making up some, you know, some blends. And yeah, in terms of, you know, if you, if you've listened tonight and you're thinking you would like to get started, I always just share how you can do that at the end. So you can get oils at we kind of call this the full price, which we call it retail um nobody really does this because unless you're only buying like one oil it makes sense to start with a customer wholesale account uh it costs 24 pounds if you're not getting a kit and then you get everything at 25 percent off with that um or if you get a starter kit the 24 pounds is included for free so it's kind of under wholesale at then because you're getting um the oils are a bit discounted as well because they come as a kit so if you were interested in getting started, it's £24 for that account. If you start with a kit, as I said, that membership's free. And I think it's important to say some people are under the impression that to get an account or membership, there's an obligation to do something and there isn't. So you don't have to you know, ever buy again if, if you want to. You're not asked to teach or share in any way and there's no monthly fees going forwards. So just the, the actual kits themselves, as I said, you can totally get individual oils. This is the most 
cost effective way and these are the most uh, commonly purchased kits these two and they're exactly the same oils they're just in different bottle sizes so i'll hold mine up here just to show you so you can see um so one is a, one this is the small bottle set so on the left small bottle set 112 for those 10 oils and then on the right it's exactly the same but the bottles are three times bigger so you are getting more value because the, actually that sets only twice the price and you're getting three times the oil. Um, so how much is the, the diffuser? Normally that costs 35 pounds and that's, you know, mm -hmm. kind of for free with that kit. So that it's a really good value kit, that one, um, if budget allows. But the other ones, you know, still allows you to get started if budget doesn't allow. Yes. And then there are a couple of others, but they kind of, they're moving away a little bit from what we've spoken about tonight. Um, if it, like the one on the left, it's kind of the price point is in the middle of the two we've just looked at. And this is quite nice because it gives you, it still gives you the diffuser and it also gives you carrier oil. You get eight oils and we've spoken about most of them, but not all of them. So, you know, if you're interested in that, you could always ask one of us after and we can tell you, but um, you've got orange in there instead of lemon and you don't have oregano you've got balance which is a grounding blend um, and you've got um, you don't have air in there the respiratory blend you've got aroma touch instead which is a, a relaxing one okay um, just to say you know the membership side you get a whole load of perks when you when you have membership so you get a welcome gift including some of you know, most or, or some of those things sort of in the bottom left. So you get lots of little samples to try of different products that are all <laughs> used in a book, a little booklet. So you can start looking things up. You'll get a rollerball or two. So you can start making, you know, your first sort of blends, which is really nice. Um, and we have within this team, we offer an, an oil camp called a, like an education program. and not every, not everybody offers this and it's really we we we've taken a lot of time and care to teach you how to use the oils once you've got them so you if you want the support and if you want the guidance there's a lot of it there and it's all included for free and we often get asked you know people are expecting to have to pay for this oil camp program but it's something that we'd, we just provide because like i said at the very beginning i'm passionate about the support and the education so that's included um, and you get an hour with whoever's invited you on tonight when you first get your oils to kind of get you going and take you through them and look up some health issues and things like that. Yes. Now doTERRA happen to have an offer on this month. So sometimes they have um, offers and sometimes they don't. They didn't have one on last month, but this month with um, the larger kit that I spoke about, um, you get these two oils for free this month. So Adaptive is um, one for, um, it's called the Calming Blend. It's good for mind and mood, but basically stress and anxiety. That's what Adaptive has, has been designed for. And Copaiba is like the CBD of the essential oil world. So it works on the same system of the body that CBD oil works on, but it doesn't have any of the you know, psychoactive concerns, and it's actually more bio bioavailable to the body. So they're, they're two phenomenal oils, and they come free with the, the one, the home essentials kit. And then, um, I mean, you could add something on to say, say you were thinking about the Aroma Touch diffuse kit, you could add an oil or two on to that and still get those, those other ones for free. Um, and lastly, because we didn't want to, um, you know, we still wanted to offer something if if people didn't want to go for that that one. We're we're gonna kind of gift a, a five mil wild orange if um you know if you wanted one of the other kits as well. Um so yeah, that is the oils and what we can do with them. So yeah, how was that guys? Great. So one of those kits sorry.